This lens renders the highest quality images that I've ever seen out of a lens at the sub $200 price point. And prior to receiving this lens, I honestly would have thought that this was virtually impossible. And that's because this is a 35 millimeter F0.95 lens. And all the F0.95 lenses I have tested on this channel to date, although many of them, I absolutely love them, they are often optically flawed lenses, and they give you an image that looks like sort of a mix between a modern lens and a retro vintage lens. Now that's never been a problem for me, and I sort of love that look, but I always thought that that was just something when we're at this price point and we're getting the F0.95, that's what we're gonna get. Some chromatic aberration, maybe not as sharp as possible at F0.95. And I just thought that that was the state of play. And then when I was sent out this lens and I tested it, I honestly could not believe what I was seeing. At under $200, I think this lens renders images that they could come out of a $1,000 plus Canon, Sony, or Nikon lens. They are that good. And I spent probably the better part of 10 days just trying to find the optical flaws with this lens, of which there are almost none. Now, full disclosure, when this lens was released, I reached out to the manufacturer and asked if they would send me a copy for free, of which they did. Generally, if they won't send me the lens, I just buy it myself with all these budget lenses. Some of them are sent for free and some of them I have to pay for. But in this case, I wanna disclose that I did not pay for this lens. This isn't a paid or sponsored video and the manufacturer did not have any say in the making of the video. This is a 35 millimeter F0.95 APS-C lens, which gives you equivalent field of view of 50 millimeters on full frame. And this is important because 50 millimeters on full frame is the most popular focal length of all time. There are more 50 millimeter interchangeable lenses in the world than any other lens. And that's simply because 50 millimeters on full frame or 35 millimeters on APS-C is just incredibly useful. There is so much you can do with that focal length. And the first thing that I found it super useful for is just general purpose walk around photo and video. Now, whether you're traveling or you're going out with your friends and family to dinner, or you're taking the kids for ice cream, this is a lens that you can take and is going to cover all of those situations with one single focal length. And that's because 35 millimeters on an APS-C camera allows you to get enough of the scene that you can sort of take a picture of somebody and have some sort of context of where they are and what's going on around them. But it's sort of a tight enough field of view that you can get a little bit closer, you can sort of open that maximum aperture up to 0.95 and you can blur out that background. So this gives you a one lens, one prime lens, one focal length and kind of do everything. The other thing this is a perfect lens for is both street photography and street portraits. Now, it's got kind of a double duty thing there because when I'm doing street photography, I'm generally going to stop that aperture down. I'm probably gonna be at sort of f5.6 or f8. That allows me to get the entire scene in as well as the person that I'm sort of trying to draw the viewer's eye to. So they've got the context, here's a person, and we've got that background in focus so you've got some sort of context in the city. And in a lot of ways, that is kind of the art of street photography. The other thing that it allows you to do, if you want to take a portrait on the street, because it can go to F0.95, you can open that up and you can completely obliterate the background, blow out that background into a blurry mess, and now you've really drawn the viewer's eye to a person, and you will probably be able to tell to some extent they are in a city, just because of the colors and the things in the background. But for the most part, it is just going to be a street portrait and they could probably be just about anywhere in the world. Importantly, on APS-C cameras, sort of somewhere between 22 and 25 millimeters is the accepted standard street photography focal length. This 35 millimeters gets you a little bit tighter, more cropped in image. And for me, I prefer the 35 millimeter focal length for that sort of street photography purpose. And that's because at that wider field of view, somewhere between 22 and 25 millimeters, you do have to get quite close to your subjects to allow them to fill the frame and create what people generally see as a traditional street photography photo. I am not completely comfortable getting that close with that focal length. 35 millimeters just allows me to get a little bit further away, but I still got a wide enough lens or a wide enough field of view to actually tell the story and show that person in the scene of the city that they're in. And I think for most people that are sort of aspiring to do street photography that, or that are interested in street photography, I think starting at the traditional sort of 22 to 25 millimeter focal length is kind of scary and frustrating and often 
leads to sort of failure and something that they kind of give up on. So I actually think for the average user, starting at 35 millimeters on a crop sensor camera is a much more comfortable starting point. The other thing that this lens is great for is portrait photography. Now, I think it is a little bit too wide for just strictly headshots, but once you get sort of to the middle of the torso, bust level, and beyond, anywhere between sort of bust level and head to toe portraiture, I think this is a perfect lens for that. And of course, it allows you to take environmental portraits. You just stop it down to f5.6, f8. You're going to get the whole scene in and the person in the scene. But if you want to blow out that background and take that sort of traditional blurry background portrait, at f0.95, you're going to be able to blur the background and get a equivalent field of view, an equivalent background blur to an f1.4 50 millimeter full frame lens. So if you take a photo with this and a 50 millimeter f1.4, which is probably the most popular portrait focal length on a full frame camera, you're going to get a very, very similar look. So much so that I think it will make your photos out of your crop sensor camera pretty much indistinguishable from a full frame camera shot on that 50 millimeter f1.4. The other thing that this lens is great for is food photography. And at 35 millimeters, I think this is just about the perfect focal length for food photography. And I think this is important because I know there's a lot of people out there that might not necessarily be professional food photographers, but what they do like to do is travel around with their friends and family or wife, what have you, and they like to, to, to sort of do travel photo and video, but then they like to go to sort of fancy or interesting restaurants and they take photos of their food as well. So the fact that this is a versatile lens that does all that travel stuff, but is also an excellent food photography lens, I think allows it to be kind of a double duty lens. And the way that I like to use it is, you can either stop the aperture down and get sort of the whole depth of the plate in focus and a bit of the table. But if you wanna create some really artistic shots with the f0.95 and the ability to focus as close as this lens does, you can actually create this really shallow depth of field where one little piece of food or one little component of a bigger dish is in focus and everything else is out of focus. And this creates a really, really interesting look that you actually don't always see on food photography and you, and you kind of only see it in sort of maybe higher end sort of artistic food photography. And this is going to allow you to totally get that look on a lens that's versatile enough to also be your sort of walk around travel photo and video lens. And of course, because this lens has a maximum aperture of f0.95, it is going to be an excellent low light lens. It is going to allow an incredible amount of light in. And there are almost no situations where you're not going to have enough light to take photos or videos with this lens. And when I was using it, I was finding that there were situations where I was shooting in sort of dark situations at f0.95. And what the camera could see was so much more than what my naked eye could see. I mean, situations where it was so dark that I was virtually on the verge of tripping and not being able to see where my feet were. And I could look in the screen and I had a perfectly clear image because this thing could go to F0.95. Now, if somebody handed me this lens and said, hey, this is a $10,000 Leica lens, I would have said, yeah, that's exactly what it looks and feels like. And I think the manufacturer probably did intend it to look and feel like a Leica lens. Now, importantly, this lens is a fully manual focus, manual aperture lens. It has no electronic contacts whatsoever, and you are going to have to manually focus and manually adjust your aperture. The aperture ring is clicked and incredibly smooth and tactile, and it's just so nice to use use. And the focus ring is once again, very smooth. And when you get to sort of the end of the turn, you get this really satisfying dull thud. When you get there, it's, it's just so nicely damp. There's not a big click or metal noise. I'm not exactly sure how they designed it that way. It's a completely metal built lens. It's incredibly heavy for its size. Surprisingly, it's based on a metal lens mount. And it even has a slide on push on metal lens cap, which once again is very satisfying, goes on sort of really easy, nicely and smoothly. And honestly, I could not say enough good things about the build quality of this lens. It's probably built as well as you can build a lens. Now, as I said, this is an APS-C lens. It's available for the Sony E-mount, Fuji X-mount, Nikon Z-mount, Canon EOS M-mount, and Micro Four Thirds. So if you do have a crop sensor camera, basically this lens is gonna go on all of those. Looking at the optical performance of this lens, this is 
where it truly sets itself apart from literally every other lens sub $200 that I've ever tested. Optically, this lens is near perfect with some very, very minor flaws, flaws that you would find in lenses that probably cost two dollars or $3,000 as well. Now, the first thing I wanna talk about is distortion. You do get a very modest amount of barrel distortion. In all this photo samples that I'm giving and all the video samples I'm giving, I am not actually correcting things like vignette and barrel distortion so you can see right out of camera what they look like. And as you'll see, I feel no need to actually correct any of the barrel distortion. It is just so minor that there'd be very few situations that you would even notice it in. If you did want to correct it, you can do that in Lightroom, and I'm sure there will be a profile for this lens at some point, but you're not going to really have to worry about distortion. Now, the other thing that we generally see with F0.95 lenses is you generally get a significant amount of vignette, which is sort of heavy darkening of the corners because often because it's an F0.95 lens, even though the aperture is opening that wide, the rest of the construction of the lens is kind of decreasing the rate and the amount of light that comes through around the edges in the corners. Now, I tested this over and over and took pictures of a number of different color surfaces just trying to see the vignette. And in my mind, I, I just cannot see it. Now, there must be some. I'm convinced there's some. So I'm going to say that there's minor vignette, but you'll see the sample images I'm throwing up on screen now. This is right out of camera. This is uncorrected. And really, it looks like borderline no vignette whatsoever. And this was really surprising to me. I really thought this was going to be an issue, but real world shooting, there really isn't any vignette to talk about. Now, the next thing that most of these lenses that go to F0.95 really struggle with is chromatic aberration. And that's where you have sort of a purple fringing or a color fringing on the edges of high contrast areas. And every F0.95 lens that I've ever tested to date, this was a significant issue with those lenses. Didn't make me dislike the lenses, but it did mean that I couldn't take those lenses into more professional situations and shoot them at F0.95. They really would have to be stopped down if you wanted a more clinical, modern looking image. This lens essentially has no chromatic aberration to speak of, or it's so well controlled that you will never notice it. So in every real world situation, and even when I was trying to bring on chromatic aberration, it's just not there. And this is interesting because the manufacturer has said that they have included special low dispersion and ED elements to virtually eliminate all aberrations is what they say in their marketing material, which I was certain had to be BS at this price point, but best I can tell that that is pretty much accurate. Now, related to chromatic aberration is longitudinal chromatic aberration. And this is where you get color fringing on the out of focus areas before and after the plane of focus. And generally this color fringing will be a different color beyond the plane of focus and another color before the plane of focus. And in this lens, there's very little longitudinal chromatic aberration, but if you do shoot some high contrast scenes and you zoom into like four or 800%, you will see a minor amount of what they call Call loca or longitudinal chromatic aberration. Now, in all my real world shoots where I wasn't really trying to, to test this or find this, I really didn't see it. And in a global scale, you just won't even notice it. But I was really working hard to find some sort of optical imperfection with this lens. And this is basically the only one I could find <laughs> was this longitudinal chromatic aberration if you zoom right into 800%. Now, looking at the flare performance on this lens, this is a really interesting one because I, I find quite commonly with all the F0.95 or in the cinema lenses that I've tested, the ones that go to so T1.05, is that when they are wide open, they often can flare quite badly. But when you just stop them down a little bit, it will often eliminate the flare altogether. And this lens kind of has that same story. If you are pointing it directly into light in sort of a, a situation where you're at night and you've got a street light or something like that, if you're at F0.95 and that light is coming directly at the lens, then you get this crazy huge flare. But if you stop it down to F1.4, it eliminates the flare completely. So it is a bit of a funny thing. So it is a what I would call a mixed result in flare performance. So if you have problems with flare with this lens, you do need to stop it down to f1.4 and that eliminates it. The other thing I did find is even when I was sort of shooting into street lights and having sort of the sun off to the corner of the in the sky and coming sort of along the cross the front of the lens, 
What you'd find is even when you did get flare, the lens held its contrast exceptionally well, which is something that cheap lenses almost never do. So when you do have flare or when you do have that light hitting the lens, even when you can see the lens flare, you still have good contrast in the scene and it just doesn't completely white out or sort of make the photo just look like a creamy, dreamy mess. So although the flare performance in the lens isn't perfect, I would still say it is one of the better performers and probably towards the top end of the best performers I've seen at this price point. But it is one place that this lens probably doesn't perform on par with sort of the two or $3,000 lenses that I think would render similar image quality across the rest of the tests that I'm doing on the lens. Another place that these F0.95 lenses almost always suffer is close-up image quality. And I just assumed that this was something that could not even possibly be overcome because I've got a number of F0.95 lenses. And when you get close to the subject, even if you're within their sort of minimum focus distance, that it just becomes a, a mess. It's just a smeary mess. The photos are completely unusable. You really have to back away. You cannot use them close up. But this lens holds its sharpness and detail right down to its minimum focus distance. And once again, I just assumed that this was something that would sort of never be solved, particularly at these sort of budget-friendly F0.95 lenses. But this lens gives you incredible close-up image quality, even at f0.95. And because the closer you get to your subject, automatically the more blurry your background becomes. Giving you the ability to get very close to a subject and shoot at f0.95 allows you to get this crazy shallow depth of field, which can be super hard to focus. But when you get the shot right, it really looks like nothing you've ever seen before because you're shooting at f0.95 close up, something that mostly you've never seen before. So it really is an interesting look, and I like the fact that I can use this as a close-up lens. That also makes it really good for that sort of food photography or product photography type, type photo situations. The other place that the F0.95 lenses have almost always suffered is sharpness, particularly shooting at F0.95 wide open. Well, I would say at F0.95, I would call this lens just shy of razor sharp. I say razor sharp when an image is near perfect. This is pretty close. I'm not gonna call it razor sharp, but I'm going to call it very, very sharp. And it's truly eyelash sharp. So when you're shooting an F0.95 and you're shooting a portrait of a person and you nail that F0.95 focus, you do get eyelash sharp images. You can see the individual details of the person's eyelashes. Now I will say the, the biggest challenge shooting a manual lens at f0.95 is nailing that focus. And I found with this lens, there were times where I thought, oh, I see an image that was a little bit blurry. And I was like, I knew it, I found the flaw in this lens. But after having a good look, I realized that I just missed focus. Every time I nailed fo focus, it was an extremely sharp lens. And unlike a lot of the other F0.95 lenses, I never had an image that I shot at F0.95 that I did nail focus and I felt like, I wish I would have shot at F1.4 or F2 just to get a little bit more sharpness and a little bit more detail because at F0.95, it is plenty sharp enough. And I think for really any practical situation, you can shoot this lens completely wide open and even pixel peepers are gonna be happy with the sharpness and detail. And finally, I wanna talk about bokeh. For me, this lens is probably an eight out of 10 with the quality of the bokeh and the background blur. This is another area that a lot of the F0.95 lenses that I have tested do suffer. They often have sort of crazy and interesting background blur, which you might choose as a personal choice. And certainly with some of my favorite lenses, I do like to shoot with these lenses that have this crazy out of focus specular highlights and bubble bokeh and things like that. But those aren't lenses I could really take into a professional situation and shoot sort of a, a corporate headshot or fashion photography or something like that because that out of focus area is a little bit too busy and crazy and I guess stylized, I might call it. This gives you overall an extremely smooth background drop to whatever you've got in focus and it has a really creamy, dreamy, nice background blur. I will say that I did find in some situations when there was a lot going on in the background and the way and the lighting was a certain way, the background would get a bit busy. So I think for the most part, I would consider the lens probably a nine out of 10 in most situations. A limited number of situations is probably a six out of 10 
when the background gets a little bit more blurry. So overall, I'm kind of calling it around an eight out of 10 overall, but I am very happy with the background blur. And I really never found a situation where the background blur got so distracting that it was a problem. And in most situations, the background blur was absolutely perfect. And ultimately I have to ask, who is this lens for? And first I wanna say something about manual focus, manual aperture lenses, because I think the people that this lens can do the most good for and can change the images they're creating the most, are new users and new photographers that are probably going to be intimidated by the idea of shooting manual focus, manual aperture. And I will say that I have felt like that for many, many years, and nowadays, at least 50% of the time, if not more, I'm shooting with a manual focus, manual aperture lens. And you have to keep in mind that most of the photos up until very recent modern history, all the historic photos that you've ever seen, all these old black and white photos, and even the early color photos were all taken with manual focus, manual aperture lenses. Most of the time with a 50 millimeter F1.4 lens, which this 35 millimeter F0.95 lens is the equivalent of on your crop sensor camera. So all those millions of people were able to take those photos and get those photos at least in focus enough that the image was compelling. And absolutely you can too. It just takes a little bit of practice. And for that little bit of time and effort that you put into learning how to use and nail focus on a manual focus, manual aperture lens, the payoff is that you're going to have the ability to generate images and get image equality out of a lens like this that is equivalent to lenses that cost thousands and thousands of dollars more in the autofocus realm. And if you're interested in checking out this new Brighton Star lens, I will put some links in the description down below that has pricing and current availability on the lens.